even though if they fly or don't they have wings and the wings of the cockroach they are they are about 34 to 550 mm long so the appendages which forms the mouth part actually helps the cockroach in chewing and biting onto the food particles inside all the mouth parts of the cockroach there is present a tongue like structure which is called as the hypopharynx the tegmina completely covers the hind wings that arise from the meta thorax hello everyone a warm welcome to today's session on chapter 7 that is structural organization in animals i'm dr divya biology faculty vidyashram pre university college mysore temple of excellence so in the previous session of this chapter we had discussed about the morphology and anatomy of earthworm in today's session first we shall deal with the morphology of cockroach and in the next coming session we shall deal with the anatomy of cockroach so cockroaches are found everywhere they are found living in clean places as well as in dirty environments inside the cupboard inside the bookshelves racks everywhere we find cockroaches right and these cockroaches are harmful to human beings as they cause a lot of diseases such as which comes with the food poisoning so in today's session we shall understand what is the morphology of cockroach what family it belongs to and how the body of the or external characteristic features of the cockroach are we shall see so the cockroach is actually when you look at it it is brown or black bodied apart from that in some of the tropical countries the cockroaches are also green in color but generally the cockroaches that are found they are either brown or black bodied and they belong to the kingdom animalia the phylum arthropoda and the class insecta so they are the insects belonging to the phylum arthropoda Poda. And the most important feature or characteristic of the arthropoda members are having an exoskeleton. Just like that, the cockroach also has an exoskeleton. We shall look into it later. And they can also be bright yellow in color, red and green in color, especially in countries where, which belong to the tropical areas or the tropical region. And when we see the size of the cockroach, it is about 0 0.6 to 7.6 centimeter. So this is the size of the cockroach. They vary in size starting from very small to 0 0.6 to 7.6 centimeter. And they have a long antenna. So antenna, it acts as sensors so that the cockroaches can feel the smell or whatever is present on the ground, food particles, it can feel or and also it communicates with the other uh, cockroaches through the antenna. So therefore, the antennas, they are the sensory organs in other terms, they can be called as the sensory organs of the cockroach. So they have long antennas and they have legs and also they have a flat ex extension of the upper body so the upper body of the cockroach is a flat extension and it has a body wall that is connected to the heads actually it has an exoskeleton a hard covering that is the upper body wall that actually connects with that of the head so this is a structure of the cockroach wherein it has a long antenna it has legs and it has a flat extension on the upper body that extends towards the head and it forms a connectivity between the head and the upper body and these uh, cockroaches they are usually nocturnal nocturnal in the sense they are not seen around in the daytime usually wherever there is a dark place the cockroaches prefer a dark place and also we all know that once it is night and suddenly you go into the kitchen and uh, you switch on the lights you'll see the cockroaches busy with their uh, work wherein they'll continue their feeding habits and all that right that is because they come out only during the night so those animals or organisms that come out only during the night are called as the nocturnal so therefore since they are the night dwellers they come out only during the night they are called as the nocturnal and they are omnivores that is they feed on both 
vegetables as well as the non vegetarian food they feed their uh, both carnivorous as well as herbivorous so such organisms are called as omnivorous so they are omnivores and they usually live in damp places almost throughout the world everywhere in the world they are found there is no place in the world where cockroaches are not found so wherever the place is damp it is filthy and it is moist there and all and it is a bit dark there and all the cockroaches are usually found so this is the habitat of the cockroach wherein they live in the damp moist places all over the world and they are the pests and vectors of several diseases so they are the pests because any inside the book Uh, cupboard they will feed on the paper if it is on a uh, cupboard filled with clothes they start making holes they feed on the clothes by making holes on the clothes right so therefore they are pests and also they feed on the crops all that so therefore they are the pest and also they are the vectors of several diseases so vectors are nothing but they are called as the carriers they are nothing but the vehicles which help in transmission of disease so here vectors means cockroaches are vectors to human beings right why because they cause they carry harmful microorganisms which cause diseases in human beings that is why if you don't clean uh, your plates and all properly before eating or if you don't uh, uh like keep your place tidy then there are chances of especially the kitchen then there are chances of getting food poisoning so food poisoning again is caused by uh, the harmful effects of the microbes so from where will the microbes come it it is from the cockroach so therefore the cockroaches they are vectors of several diseases especially in human beings and cockroaches they are usually scientifically they are called as periplanata americana so the scientific name of cockroaches periplanata americana and they are usually vertebrates that is they have a vertebral column they are the vertebrates so uh, we know that they be belong to the kingdom animalia the phylum arthropoda and the class insecta and the uh, scientific name that is the genus is periplanata and the species is americana that is cockroach it is called as periplanata americana moving on to the body of the cockroach so overall the cockroach it is divided into three important body structures or regions one is called as the head the thorax and the abdomen so we shall study about these one by one so overall the cockroach it has wings it has some of the cockroaches they usually fly but some don't but even though if they fly or don't they have wings and the wings of the cockroach there are they are about 34 to 550 mm long so the overall length of the cockroach along with the wings is with 34 to 53 mm long with wings that extends usually beyond the tip of the abdomen in the case of male so how you can distinguish between the male and the female is that in the male cockroach the wings extends beyond the abdominal cavity so that is that is it um, easier to remember it extends beyond the body so therefore we can say that such cockroaches are the male so in males usually the wings they extend beyond the tip of the abdomen in the case of males and the body of cockroach is usually segmented like how in earthworms we had seen metamerism or right but in this case cockroach it is just the presence of the segment so the body is uh, segmented and it is usually divided into three important regions that is the head thorax and the abdomen so as you can see the body of the cockroach so you can see the wings are extends beyond the tip of the abdomen and so it extends beyond the tip of the abdomen so somewhere here itself the abdomen will end but it will extend beyond the abdomen and also the antenna as you can see it has very long antennas they have legs the cockroach has legs and the head is connected to the thorax region and also cockroaches are segmented and the body is mainly divided into three di distinct regions one is the head the thorax and the abdomen so this is about the morphology and the entire body i told you it is covered with exoskeleton so exoskeleton is one of the characteristic features of arthropods all 
most all of the arthropod members they have a exoskeleton that is a extra exo means external skeleton it is a skeletal like covering so skeleton is hard similarly like that the cockroach is also covered by a external hard skeleton so the entire body is covered by a hard chitinous exoskeleton and therefore it appears brown in color and the exoskeleton is the one which gives the brown color or the respective colors to the cockroach so they are chitinous means made up of chitin so the exoskeleton is made up of chitin so and in each segment the exoskeleton has hardened plates called as clearites so the head also there is clearites being present so this is the exoskeleton in the head and then in the uh, thorax and the abdomen so all these are the exoskeleton present and each of the exoskeleton and each of these and each of these exoskeleton are called as sclerites they are nothing but hardened plate like structures as you can see the exoskeletons are hardened plate like structures and these plate like structures are called as the sclerites and again the sclerites are of two types one is if the sclerites are present dorsally it is called as tergites and if it is present ventrally it is called as sternites so what did i tell you the whole body of the cockroach is covered by exoskeleton so this is a cockroach say for example so the whole body it's not just only the upper portion of the cockroach that is covered so upper means it is the dorsal so ventral means it is the lower body surface so the whole body is covered by uh, skeleton and the skeletal plates are called as clearites so depending on whether the sclerite is present dorsally that is on the upper side or present ventrally that is on the lower side it is of it is named as two types that is if the sclerites are present dorsally that is on the upper side of the cockroach it is called as tergites and if they are present ventrally so what are sclerites they are nothing but the exoskeleton or the skeletal plate like structures right so if they are present ventrally they are called as sternites so these are the two types of sclerites that are present so tergites are the sclerites that are present on the upper body surface of the cockroach that is on the dorsal surface and sternites are the exoskeleton or the sclerites that are present on the lower body surface of the cockroach that is called as the ventral surface and they are joined by very thin and flexible membrane called as the arthrodial membrane so arthropoda so therefore the membrane is called as the arthrodial membrane so the exoskeleton is connected because how are they connected because i told you the exoskeletons are present in plates so the head is a separate exoskeleton the other body part is a separate exoskeleton so there is a connectivity between the skeletal plate of the head as well as the thorax and the abdomen so how are they connected they are connected by a very thin membrane which is very flexible membrane called as the arthrodial membrane so this is about the external body characteristics of the cockroach so next moving on to studying the different body parts that is the different segments so i told you the segments of cockroach is divided into three important parts that is the head the thorax and the abdomen so we shall study each of these one by one so first we shall study about the morphology of the head so the head the shape of the head of a cockroach is usually triangular it is almost don't think triangular means it is with the pointed ends no but it is somewhat triangular in shape so it is triangular and it lies anterior anteriorly at right angles to the longitudinal body axis so the head usually lies at right angles to the body axis and it is fused by the formation of six segments so the body is usually divided into different segments so in the head how many segments are there six segments so these six segments together constitute the head so they fuse together to form a head so therefore it is the it is formed the head of a cockroach it is triangular in shape and it is placed at the uh, right angles to the body axis and also it is formed by the fusion of six segments 
and it shows that is why it shows great mobility because the segments are present like how the segments help in the easy movement of the earthworm right so here also in the case of cockroach the six segments that are present actually gives great movement or mobility to the head of the cockroach in all different directions that is it makes the neck of the cockroach there is a small connectivity between the head and the uh, thorax of the cockroach so that particular small region is now ca called as a neck and the neck is made up of different segments so because overall the head of the cockroach since it is made up of different segments uh, like it is made up of six segments and because of the presence of these segments it the head is of great flexibility the cockroach can turn its head in different directions so in all almost all the direction and the head capsule it bears a pair of compound eyes and the head capsule of the cockroach it bears a pair of compound eyes so you can see here the compound eyes are present on either side of the cockroach head so and also it has a pair of thread like antenna that usually comes out of membranous like structures which are nothing but sockets so there are sockets present on the head and from the sockets the antenna usually come out and they are nothing but called as the membranous sockets so membranous sockets right above the eye as you can see here there are membranous sockets being present so like it's just like you have sockets for plugging in uh, the plugs and all that right just like that here membranous sockets are there in the cockroach so you can see membranous So from this membranous socket, you can see the antenna arising. So these are the membranous sockets that are present on either side, just uh, in front of the eye or below the eye, wherein the antennas will usually arise. And the antennas are almost thread-like. So they're very, very thin. They're almost thread-like and they usually lie in front of the eyes. And the antenna, they have sensory receptors, means sensory receptors to receive the signal. So what signals usually they receive, they uh, help in monitoring the environment. Say for example, the cockroach is running by, the antennas will uh, sense where the food is being present. So that is how the cockroaches move in that particular direction or it may sense danger. So whatever uh, progress is happening in processes taking place in the environment, all that will be sensed by the antenna. So therefore, the antennas are called as the sensory receptors. Why? Because they help in help the cockroaches in monitoring the environment that is in knowing whether there is any harm, whether there is food present, all that will be sensed by the antenna that is present in the cockroach and the anterior end of the head actually it bears appendages so these appendages are nothing but the mouth part that i'm talking about so these appendages which forms the mouth part actually helps the cockroach in chewing and biting onto the food particles so we have finished with the head region in the head region itself what all are present the compound eyes are present and apart from that there is also one more structure present that is called as the Ocellus. So, ocellus are the photoreceptors. They actually help the cockroach to sense the light. So, that is when it will, uh, so because it can sense the light, the cockroach will be able to know whether it is the uh, surrounding is dark or whether it is light. So, ocellus, the main function of ocellus is photoreceptor, receptor to receive something. What is it receiving? It is receiving signals that there is light. So, the main function of the ocellus is to sense the light and the main function of the compound eye is to um, see and the main function of the antenna is to sense the environment. They are the sensory receptors which help the cockroach to sense the environment and after that uh, where are the antennas present? It is present in so membranous sockets and also apart from that the head also bears the mouth part and the mouth part is divided into 
mandible it has different uh, regions called as the mandible the labrum the maxilla and the labium which we'll study later on and these mouth parts usually help the cockroach it is present at the anterior end of the cockroach that is at the tip of the uh, cockroach head or at the anterior end and it mainly helps the cockroach in chewing and feeding on the and biting the food into smaller pieces so next moving on to the mouth part so in detail we will study the anterior portion of the head of the cockroach which consists of the mouth parts so the mouth part is made up of a labrum that is the upper lip and it is made up of a pair of mandibles it is just made up of a labrum that is the upper lip and it is made up of two mandibles therefore it is a pair of mandibles and it is made up of a pair of maxillae and also it is made up of a lower lip so just like how we have a upper lip a lower lip and inside the teeth being present just like that the cockroaches have a labrum which forms the upper lip so this is the head of the cockroach as you can see they have just moved the body parts into different directions so that it is easily visible so this is the upper lip of the cockroach that is the labrum upper lip and once we open the upper lip inside on both the ends there is the uh, mandible being present so mandibles are being present and these mandibles it is the grinding region which help the cockroach to grind the food or break the food into smaller bits so mandibles are present and then the lower lip is present so right below the mandible is present the maxilla and below the maxilla it is present the lower lip which is called as the labium lower lip so this is the general structure of the mouth parts of a cockroach so it is and also there is a median flexible lobe which is called as the hypopharynx so hypopharynx it functions like a tongue so below between the upper lip and the lower lip there is present the hypopharynx which actually functions like a tongue so this is the it is also called as the hypopharynx so this actually lies the hypopharynx lies within all the other mouth parts of the cockroach so what were all the other mouth parts of the cockroach it was the upper lip which is called as the labrum and then uh, below the upper lip is present a pair of mandibles on the upper side and below the mandibles is present the pair of maxilla and below that is present the lower lip that is the labium and within all these mouth parts like how we have a tongue right a tongue is present inside all the mouth parts right just like that inside all the mouth parts of the cockroach there is present a tongue like structure which is called as the hypopharynx so these are the different mouth parts of a cockroach and the major function of the mouth parts of the cockroach is to help the cockroach in onto uh, chewing and biting onto the food so next moving on to the thorax so thorax is the portion of the or the segment of the cockroach that is present just below the head region so the thorax is also divided into three parts so they are called as the prothorax the mesothorax and the metathorax so the head of the cockroach is always connected to a thorax by a short extension of the pro thorax so in, uh, while explaining general structure of the cockroach i told you the head is always connected to the thorax of the cockroach so the thorax is divided into three important regions three important parts one is the prothorax the mesothorax and the metathorax so the head is connected with thorax by a short extension so the head of the cockroach so if this is the head of the cockroach and the thorax of the cockroach both are connected to each other by a small extension so what is that extension it is nothing but the extension of the prothorax so the extension of the prothorax actually the uh, which is known as the neck so that particular region is called as the neck like how we have even for us our head is connected to the remaining parts of a body by 
a neck right just like that the cockroach also the head is connected to the lower uh, body or the thorax by a neck and that neck is nothing but a extension of the prothorax itself and each thoracic segment uh, what do you mean by each thoracic segment it is the prothorax the mesothorax and the metathorax all of these they contain a pair of walking legs so as you can see here the a pair of walking leg present in the prothorax then again here a pair of walking legs present in the mesothorax and a pair of walking legs present in the metathorax so therefore all the segments of the thorax or the body parts of the thorax region contains the legs and the cockroach is I mean it has three pairs of legs that is six legs wherein each pair is divided in the prothorax the mesothorax and the metathorax so this is the structure of the cockroach when it comes to the thorax and also we know that cockroaches they have wings and in males i had told you the wings extend beyond the tip of the abdomen so the first pair of wings that come out of the cockroach it usually arises from the mesothorax and the second pair of wing arises from the metathorax so the first pair it arises from the mesothorax and the second pair it usually arises from the metathorax so based on the distribution of different body parts in the thorax region the uh, thorax is divided into three main different parts that is the prothorax the mesothorax and the metathorax so prothorax is nothing but the extension of the head the extension of the prothorax is nothing but the neck which actually connects the cockroach head to the thorax region and next comes the legs so the cockroach bears legs and each pair of legs that is 3 into 2 that is uh, six legs are being present wherein each pair is present in the different thoracic body part of the cockroach and next also they have a pair of wings so in the in a pair of wings the first pair actually arises from the mesothorax and the second pair of wings arises from the metathorax so the uh, four wings that is mesothorax mesothoracic it is called as the tegmina and they are opaque and dark in color opaque means you cannot see through it it is dark when you hold it to the light the light will not pass through it that is opaque so it is opaque and it is dark and it is leathery and it covers the rest of the hind wing so the four wings that is the first wings that is formed the first pair of wings that arises from the mesothoracic region it is called as the four wings and the four wings such four wings are called as tegmina and when you look at the four wings they are usually opaque and they are leathery and dark in color and they completely cover the hind wings so from where does the hind wings arise the hind wings arise from the meta thorax therefore the four wings arise from the mesothorax and the hind wings arise from the metathorax the four wings that arise from the mesothorax are called as the tegmina and the tegmina completely covers the hind wings that arise from the metathorax and the hind wings they are transparent the four wings it was opaque right opaque means it was dark in color the light cannot pass through it it is opaque but when compared to that the hind wings they are usually transparent and they are the ones which usually which the cockroach usually uses in the case of flight or in order to flight so this is about the thoracic region of the cockroach so the thorax of cockroach it is mainly divided into prothorax mesothorax and metathorax each of the thorax has a pair of legs and there is and two pairs of wings being present so the first pair of wing which is called as the fore wing it arises from the mesothorax and it is dark in color and it is opaque and it is leathery and the second wing that is called the second pair of wing that is called as the hind wing it arises from the metathorax and the metathorax wings are usually light in color they are transparent and these are the wings that are usually help in the flight of the cockroach and that uh, the uh, four wings that is the wings that arise from the mesothorax is called as the tegmina so we have the fore wing and the hind wing being present so there is a pair being present here so this is about the thoracic region of the cockroach so next moving on to the next important region of the cockroach which is the abdomen so i had told you cockroach is divided into the head 
the thorax and the abdomen so we will study about the abdomen so um, as i had told you uh, the head of the cockroach is divided into six segments right but when we look in the abdomen of the cockroach both in the case of male and female the abdomen is divided into it consists of 10 segments so um, the number of segments is uh, same but there is a difference in the uh, like presence of some of the organs when it comes to male and female in in a particular segment so we shall look about it so in females the seventh the sternum is boat shaped. So why is it called the sternum? I told you previously it the cockroach is completely covered by an external skeleton that is an exoskeleton and the exoskeleton is in the form of segments which are called as sternum right. So instead of using the term segments we can use the term sternum here. So therefore the, uh, how many uh, segments the abdomen of cockroach is of it is of 10 segments and each segment is called as a sternum they are made up of plates of exoskeleton right. So each uh, in the case of female, the seventh sternum, which is nothing but the seventh segment, it is boat shaped and together with the eighth and the ninth sterna, it forms a brood or a genital pouch whose anterior part actually bears the female gonophore. It bears the spermatical pores and the collateral gland so the abdomen bears in the case of females the abdomen that is the abdomen of a cockroach is generally divided into 10 segments in the 10 segments in the case of if it is a female cockroach in the abdomen that is in the 7th 8th and the ninth segment all the reproductive parts of the female are present in a female cockroach so in the seventh sternum usually when we look at the seventh sternum of the female cockroach it is usually in the shape of a boat it is boat shaped and this seventh sternum along with the eighth that is in the seventh sternum in the eighth sternum and in the ninth sterna actually there is presence of a brood or a genital pouch a pouch like structure that is a genital pouch of the female cockroach a genital pouch is present and in the genital pouch there is presence of the female gonopore the spermatical pores and the collateral glands all these together forms the constitutes the female reproductive structure of the cockroach which is present in the abdomen especially in the 7th, 8th and the 9th sterna or the segment. So in the case of males the genital pouch or the chamber that is present in the males so the male and the female both will have a genital pouch right because without that the reproduction will not further progress but in the case of males the genital pouch which is also called as the genital chamber it is present at the hind end of the abdomen that is it is present at the lower end of the abdomen and it is bounded or it is um, covered dorsally by the ninth and the tenth Terga. So, terga. Remember, terga means that is the lower side. So, dorsal, that is, sorry, terga is the upper side. So, if you remember, when I was still in the previous slide, I had told you the entire body of cockroach is covered by a exoskeleton. So, that is nothing but the sterna. And if the sterna is present above the cockroach body, that is on the dorsal side, it is called as the terga. And it is, and if it is, and if it covers the ventral side, it is called as the sternum. So, in males, usually the genital pouch or the genital chamber is usually present at the hind end, that is at the lower end of the abdomen. And they are usually present at the ninth and the 10th terga. That is on the dorsal side. They are usually present on the ninth and the 10th segment or the ninth and the 10th terga because it is the sterna that is present on the dorsal side. If you forget to write the term terga, you can also write it as it is present on the ninth and the 10th sterna on the dorsal side. Therefore, it is meant that it is terga. And also, it is present ventrally, covered ventrally by the ninth sternum. So, it is present at the tip of the abdomen, especially at the ninth and the tenth segment region, and it is covered by the skeletal exoskeletal 
plate wherein it is covered by the ninth and the tenth terga or dorsally and ventrally it is covered by the ninth sternum. So this is the covering that is the protection the exoskeleton actually protects that is the exoskeleton or the uh, skeletal plate that is present in the ninth and the tenth segment both uh, in the upper portion and in the ninth segment and the lower portion they actually act as a protective covering to the genital area of the male cockroach. So this is the present. So you can see there is difference in the position. So the female reproductive structure usually started from the seventh segment or the seventh sterna itself in the case of the female cockroach. But uh, in the male, it's, it is from the uh, ninth and the tenth sternum. So that is the difference that is being present even though both the male and the female cockroach has ten segments. And next, it contains a dorsal anus that is a ventral male genital pore and a gonapophysis. So the male cockroach usually it has a ventral that is on the lower side. The genital pore is being present and also it has a reproductive structure called as the gonapophysis being present on the ventral side. In the female there was present or presence of the female gonophore and also it consists of genital pouch but in the case of the uh, cockroach, it, uh, male cockroach it is present on the ventral side and the, also there is an organ called as the gonapophysis being present on the ventral side and the male cockroaches usually bear a pair of short thread like anal styles. So they bear thread like structures which are called as styles because they are thread like they are called as styles like how in flower do we have style right. So what is style? The male, you can, it is easy to remember. The male reproductive part of a flower, the anther is being present and the anther is connected to by a style, right? So the style and the anther together forms the stamens, which is the male reproductive part. Just like that, in cockroach, there is a male reproductive part which is present and the male cockroaches, usually they have a short thread-like anal styles being present. So styles, whenever the term style comes, it means it is something related to the male in the case, in this case. And, but it is absent in the female. So the main major difference between a male cockroach and a female cockroaches are one difference as I told you with the wings, right? With the wings there is a difference and when it comes to the uh, anal region the male cockroaches usually have a pair of short thread like structures called as the anal styles which is not seen in the females and in both the male and the female the 10th segment actually possesses a pair of jointed filamentous structures which is called as the anal cerci. So anal cerci is present in both the male and the female cockroaches on the 10th segment but the, the presence of the anal stylus is only in the male cockroach. It is absent in the female cockroach. So this is about the abdominal part of the cockroach. So as you can see here the abdomen as anal circus. So this circus is present in both the male and the female but the st anal stylus is present only in the case of the male. So these are the different structures that are present in the abdomen of the male and the female cockroach. So uh, in today's session we uh, dealt with the morphology that is the external structure of a cockroach. What are the different parts being present and I had told you the cockroach, uh, the name, scientific name of cockroach is Periplaneta americana. It belongs to the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Arthropoda and also and the class Insecta and cockroaches. The, main, the body is divided into the head, thorax and the abdomen and the different parts that are present in the head, thorax and the abdomen. We also studied about that and also we studied about the exoskeleton of the cockroach. So I hope you understood the session very well. So in the next coming session, we shall discuss about the anatomy of cockroach. That is inside the cockroach, what are the different body parts such as the excretory system, the circulatory system, the respiratory, all these different or uh, the uh, elementary kennel or the digestive system, all these will study in the next coming session. So we shall meet in the next coming session. Thank you.